Welcome everyone, I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian Technician, here to host the Market Buzz. This show looks at weekly setups across the U.S. market. Using the tools available on stock charts, we'll look for long time frame trades. Please subscribe to my articles, my Twitter feed, and gregschnell.com for more information. Thanks everybody for taking the time to join me. We've got an interesting market. We've been trying to rise and I've got some really interesting stats coming for you today. Um, I think you'll find them quite interesting. So obviously breadth has been improving. Um, it is bullish and how bullish is an important factor and what does that mean? So I want to go through uh, breadth readings today just because we have we have one situation that I think is particularly compelling. And so uh, most of our conversation today is just going to talk about the breadth of the market and how that relates back to us. Okay, so the first thing I want to cover off is on this, uh, when, when we talk about breadth, one of the things we want to talk about is how many stocks are participating. There's different types of breadth that we can use. And one of the examples uh, that I've got here today is the put call ratio from the NASDAQ options exchange. And this is brought to you by Sentiment Trader. Um, great website that keeps track of a wide variety of, um, I'll call it intimate or interesting readings. And what he shows here on this particular chart is that this reading here was the highest it's ever been, or well not highest it's ever been, but the highest it's been since 2005. And the the ICE exchange, the ISE, has only been around um, since the late 1990s. So in 20 years, this is, you know, two or three of the highest readings ever. So kind of amazing to see this. And what he's talking about here um, is that the readings of calls versus puts was 2.3 times more. And when you see that sort of um, bullish enthusiasm, that's pretty major. Now, looking at all of his points here, just because you get up this high does not mean the market is topping. In some cases, like this one, it was a pretty good signal. Here it was a pretty good signal. Here it was just getting going, which, you know, we're just breaking out to new highs and that looks pretty close to what was going on there. Late 2012, early 2013. So that's a pretty nice place. Um, looking in 2014, uh, you know, big push, but then we kind of market went level for a little while. 2015 uh, looks kind of like the May high and then the market just got stuck there. In 2017, we had some high readings, but that was, uh, you know, those were pretty bullish. All of late 2017 was very good. And then in 2018, uh, this just kept running into January and interesting on that January high when everything had just kind of went ballistic. Um, this, this reading did not, which I find quite interesting, but then in September and October, this reading did, it really, um, soared. Now my breadth data is nowhere near like it was here. Um, some of the other stuff I keep track of, I will say that, you know, we have gone, you know, we've had kind of a, a run of 10 days here in a row or whatever. But the one thing that uh, Jason mentions here on his tweet was uh, the last time they bought more than two calls for every put was in September. And it hasn't happened too many times over the past decade. So uh, pretty, anyway, an interesting stat that I thought we could start off with today. The second thing I want to look at is uh on here whoa on here i'm just going to shrink the screen down one uh I, what i want to show on this one is this is the nasdaq advanced decline line and while it feels quite euphoric and and uh you know we've been moving up steadily here it, it still would appear we have more room to go and i'll explain why in a little bit here but the nasdaq if you take the advanced decline line and we do what's called cumulative where you add them together um continuing to either add or subtract from the day before what we can see here is we're right at this level where we topped out in july right at the level where we topped out in september and we're back to this level again i thought we were going to pause on this downtrend line 
we did not we we broke a little bit above but you can see we're right up at this level again now i have some interesting um, stats around the nasdaq and one of the things not stats so much one of the things i want to show you is here are the you know some of the big names in tech and amazon for example you know it's rallied this week so it's been up but if you compare where it is on its chart it is just barely above the 50-day moving average um, so not that bullish apple's very bullish i mean that chart has just been going ballistic um why didn't this chart update let me just get that for us uh, for some reason this chart is stuck on november 1 so i gotta go check my settings yeah it's my fault uh <laughs> let me just update that well that might change everything then because i looked at this chart and i was wondering how come these stocks aren't moving uh they are trying i will say facebook um you know kind of just going sideways google uh, testing its prior highs so this will be an interesting week for google here's netflix still in the downtrend channel i drew those a while ago and here's microsoft uh what we see on microsoft is you know i would have expected big bullish push like, like we're getting in apple and we haven't seen that adobe finally uh took off which was nice to see because it's been huddled down here around its 50-day uh, moving average so i would say this got better especially when i update the chart um Okay, so going back to NASDAQ, the one thing I want to talk about here is I use this 11 period moving average and, you know, we, we've had quite a straight run up here in terms of uh, price action and we're kind of holding, we're nowhere near that surge we got in September and the immediate pullback. Um, so it, it looks very normal when you go back in here. Currently we're at the high, so you know, it's not like, oh, okay, well, we're too high. Um, I would just say this looks healthy. And, you know, if it can go for a while longer, it can go for another whole month or whatever, just because breadth is improving. Here's the uh, NASDAQ high low. So this is the percentage of stocks of, uh, or sorry, this is the difference between the number of stocks making new 52 week highs and new 52 week lows. And we finally, this was quite important for me, we finally got our first surge. This is the highest level in, you know, 15 or 18 months. We got up to 200 um, and closed up there. Now, yesterday we pulled back a little bit or to finish the day. And so as this market is uh, trying to move forward, I think one of the things we want to keep track of here is can we finally break out? So we had a couple of stabs like this back in 2014, 2015, and they really were that. They were just kind of stabs and then things um, retracted. But if you look here, coming off this low, which we did similarly from minus 200 to plus 200, um, you know, that was kind of an initiation thrust that we ground sideways for a little bit, but then uh, we had enough breadth to get going. So it wouldn't surprise me that the market wants to pull back or needs to pull back a little bit here. The 10 day has been just, um, you know, pretty much all one way. So here's the New York. So the other was the NASDAQ. Here's the New York composite. We're breaking out to new 52 week highs on here, which is a nice change because we hadn't been able to do that. We're just barely above it. So whenever you're breaking above a prior high, you want to watch and confirm uh, so we had pulled back here in terms of uh, the 11 period moving average so just taking roughly two weeks and saying you know bullish or bearish this still looks bullish to me it's it's bouncing up the advanced decline line is still rising i do not want to see this advanced decline line roll over and break and if it was to start to do that that would be a um, a bigger clue for me that all of a sudden something was changing but just seeing that microsoft as an example doesn't break out amazon still down around its 50-day moving average those are not very bullish from large cap tech okay um here is but i want to make it very clear this is all still bullish what we're monitoring for is if this gets uh, too euphoric or something the definition of euphoric is when you get this huge spike in price action and then we just fell away right so we're only at 200 we could be up around four or five hundred even and that would be euphoria um, on the new york stock market the high low differential here um, looking at june and july this number's 
were much higher. We're only at 200, so this isn't screaming bullish. But again, the one thing we want to watch for is this the same sort of price action, just kind of middling price action where we don't have enough uh, momentum. Anyway, we're just breaking out to new highs, so new 52 week highs, so this is all good over the last week. For the advanced decline percentage on S&P 1500, and this is Arthur Hill's chart. So I've been working with it now for about six months, just trying to follow how it behaves um, differently. The one thing I would say here is look at how, you know, the euphoria isn't, um, you know, we had, we were up around this 20 level and here we're about 17, 16. So not as high. I would just say that it's, um, you know, we've had a series of lower highs and lower lows now. Um, so it's softening up, but you can still go up all the way down to, you know, some level of positivity here. So this still looks good. Everything's strong here. This is the Canadian market and it's really, it's got an interesting trend line on here. So first of all, the stock market is trying to break through uh, the highs made in September and this resistance level, kind of like the New York composite, has been sitting at the same level for a long time. Now we have a big downtrend here on this 11 period moving average. And it is just barely positive. Now the one thing I will say is when the New York stock, when the Canadian market doesn't participate in the US rallies, it's always a time to check our work. It just has been quite odd that it has not. So. Um, you know, you also hear things like JP Morgan has made a new, uh, push into bonds and they bought 130 billion or something like it was a big number. Uh, this kind of thrust and, and the worst part for me is I don't know what they normally buy. Uh, but that number did sound big to me when it seems like everybody's trying to reverse away from that. So I want to keep looking at the, um, at these breadth indicators and make sure they're holding up. The, this is a fly in the ointment for me, the Canadian market not following along at all, um, continuing to make lower highs in this. And so that would be um, concerning. And if we just wide note this chart. So when the Canadian market can't really get going, like back in September, of 2018, what we saw was the Canadian market was still making lower highs and lower lows um, while the US market was, was pushing up. Now again, they weren't taking out the January highs, but they were trying to push higher. And the Canadian market breaking down was kind of more of a clue. We don't have that yet. So we're still relatively positive. I would say, don't you think this line is quite odd here, how we're not participating and it's telling us something different. We also have this other trend going on here and that's the advanced decline line on a daily basis. And you could just see we've had a rising number. So the, the difference between the highs and the lows has been improving. Um, going back for almost six months, but it's also been declining on the top side. So need to see which way this is going to break out. And we saw this kind of uh, triangle action build. And then in September, we saw the big breakdown last year. I'm not predicting that. I'm just saying it's interesting that we've been going six months like this and we don't really have a, a trend change yet. Okay. So again, all of the advanced decline line indicators, breadth, everything looks bullish. I want to make that very clear. Here is the, <clears throat> the Canadian market, um, looking at the high lows and we still haven't broke above 50 and this is going back two years. What you can see is we can oscillate a lot. We're still up near the top of the range, but it hasn't been that big bull market thrust. Like we got back in 2016, 17, where we got a lot of price action. Um, here's the Canadian stock market over the last two years. And you can see, we haven't really gone that far, but we have had a nice improvement over the last two weeks or so. This one is more interesting. This is the Alexander Elder adding the high lows, the new highs minus new lows over the last five days <clears throat> and just adding them together. And what's the cumulative running total? This is at 1435. And when we zoom in on that, what we see is that's the best this year. 
It's almost the best going back to the January 2018 highs. Um, in most cases, so just here's 1733, this number is here. We still had more weeks to rise before it actually fell apart. When we were hitting the highs in September, we had nothing. We had, you know, we were at zero. So um, all through here, we had a positive period here. This is 1400. This is still very bullish. Looking at 1244, still very bullish. There is nothing in here that says, you know, oh, sell everything because the market's going to crap. It all looks bullish. Okay, so far. And that's why we watch it every week. So here's the, the um, McClellan oscillator. And one of the things on the McClellan um, that I particularly like. So there's two different ones then the McClellan oscillator and then they take that data and they sum it together and when they do that it created the summation index and you can see that we're up in this oscillating area here. We're around 800 usually that's plenty bullish um, for the New York stock market and then what we see is when it falls below 400 that can be a place where the market starts to weaken. Well the last two, it's actually weakened from higher levels, and we're up near those levels now. We, any of these red lines are kind of uh, when it falls below 400, and when we look down here, we can kind of see where that is. But lately, it's been towards the end of the, the correction, not not the start. So kind of interesting. Anyway, wanted to point that out. I think the McClellan oscillator is a nice way to look um, across the breadth here. Here's the summation index going back to 2005, uh, so 14 years. And you can see we're right at this 800 level. This is a very sticky area where we spent all of 2017, 2018 at, kind of maxing out there. It's not a problem because look at the beautiful uptrend you've had when you're up at those levels. So all of that would say everything is good. Okay, looking at the NASDAQ stock market, it doesn't get the same sort of um, push. I will say we're at this 200 level, and the 200 level is kind of where we stalled out in 2015. So we want to see this summation index continue to move higher and really kind of get us going. And lately with all of the back and forth, this is kind of the level we've stalled out at every time. So we really want to see that improve. Okay. So when, when we're looking at, at uh, the McClellan Oscillator and the Summation Index, the momentum of those is pretty important. Just standing back, looking at this chart, you can see that we're at the 200 level. Um, in 2003, we got way above that and held above it for a while. This whole uptrend in here, you know, we've been living above the minus 200 level for the best part of it. And so we're way up at the top, just standing back saying, where are we? We're on the positive side of the register and it's been very strong. So um, again, all of this data still looks supportive of a new high. Here's the NASDAQ composite. And one of the things that I want to show on this chart is we had this downtrend going for almost two years and now we've finally broken it. Now, that is very bullish. What is, again, a downtrend is different than uh, um, prior resistance. So what we want to show here is this momentum trend has clearly been broken and now we're at 55%. We do not want to see this stall out here because this is kind of where we've been caught for a while. And when we look at the percentage of stocks above the 200 day moving average, this is where we typically stall out on every one of these. We get up to around, you know, 53% and, and roll back over. We haven't been 55% of the stocks above their 200 day moving average since October of last year. And this level is just literally pretty, pretty weak. So we want to continue to watch that. I think the big um, what's the right phrase? We're, we're still improving and now we want to keep watching that improvement um, show up. And so everything in the backdrop here says that's what it's trying to do. Now, um, this is the NASDAQ 100 and we're up around 70%. That's very strong. There's nothing, um, I, 
as you can see, it, it can pull back from these levels, but it can stay up at these levels and, and make a nice uptrend. We're currently there. I think the one um, thing that surprises me is, you know, look at Amazon is still, you know, 210% from its highs. Apple, this has been a great push. Um, you know, nice to see. When when we look at these big names, Facebook here has pushed up above the prior high, but now stalled there for three days. I don't like that when we're when we have good overall market price action and yet these big leaders don't take off. So that's one of the concerns I have within the NASDAQ one hundred. And quite frankly, everything else is so bullish, just keep watching it. You know, there's new highs in stocks like Skyworks and uh, Quarvo and a lot of the 5G stuff Qualcomm started to push the other day. So it might be a rotation into some of the more um, uh, newer areas or some different areas of the market that are really going to start to take the lead. And I think that 5G is, a, is an important place to focus here. Here's the New York Composite trying to break through 60%. And again, we're we're sitting right in here. The 60% level's been a hurdle, you know, for, for two years. So can we get back through that level? That's an important one. The percentage of stocks above the 200-day moving average, we're, you know, around 65%. We've topped out here every time. So we want to see this get a thrust and get us up into the really high um, levels and that would be much more encouraging. So I think just, you know, standing back, we're still not out of the woods yet here. We want to get this up into the 65-70 level and that's going to, you know, give us these nice big deep uptrends that we want to see. When we're stuck down in these mediocre levels, this isn't very helpful and going back to 2007-2008, you know, we we just couldn't get back up into the red zone. And so I think we want to keep watching here and see if this continues to improve. And that's for the New York composite. So the, the whole of the New York stock exchange. And again, the same downtrend line was on the NASDAQ composite and it's, uh, so they're both breaking that downward trend line. I think that's bullish. What we see here is this down sloping trend line happened and then the market actually had one more correction before it started to make its new um, run back in 08, 09. I have no comparison here with 08 or 09. We're bouncing off 40%. It's more that this downtrend is trying to break. We saw this in 2016. When we got through, it got up here into the higher levels. That would be bullish. So we want to see that price action continue and, and just more stocks start to participate. The one place that hasn't broken the downtrend, oddly enough, is the S&P 500. And so that's just a bit of a surprise to me because normally it's the strongest one and normally it pushes through this sort of information sooner than everybody else. So we're right back at the levels where we've rolled over on the, on the 200 day uh, percentage of stocks above the 200 day moving average. We're, we're back up at the 70% level. And again, you can see here, we've struggled with this level, you know, since January of 2018. Um, we haven't got much higher than this. So uh, we're still bullish because everything's pushing to new highs. We don't have any reason to believe it's not going to keep going, but this is what we're watching for is, can it finally push through and give us the start of a new market thrust? Um, I, I want to go show one other chart. Let me, uh, first of all, here's the semiconductor index. And this chart has been breaking out um, to new highs, but I will say the volume um, is light. So if I just um, zoom back in here on the chart, um, this volume is one of the lighter days that we've seen. It's not the lightest, July the 4th. Uh, we had a volume day around there that was pretty low. We had some in mid-July holiday season that were low. And then here in September, we've had a couple that were just barely below here and one in October. So it, um, the ones in September marked the highs, the ones in October marked the low. So no real defining thing there. I think what I want to focus on is why isn't there more price action heading into the semiconductors if we're just starting the next thrust? So I want to keep watching that. Um, when I 
when we talk about market leadership, this chart is in the top right hand corner. That's where we want it. And usually, you know, back in September, we weren't in the top right hand corner. We were making lower highs and lower lows. So currently we're doing exactly the opposite. We're making higher highs and higher lows. This is all bullish. Um, okay, VIX is one thing to look at here. And one of the points I will make on the VIX, uh, whatever, on the 31st here, this is the Fed meeting and we had some chop here and then came down and started to um, work our way sideways here, but it's just slowly climbing. If we go look down here on a daily basis, we're down near the lows that we were at in July, August, and April. We're looking to see, can we break through that, right? These are our um, levels. The VIX um, can easily sit down here for a long period of time. And just when we look back here for 2018, when the market is rising, this is the normal level of VIX. Um, so as long as we stay under this 15 level, we're probably fine and just um, you know, you might get a sudden surge here, but so far we still look okay. And again, we don't have any, um, it's not like it's gradually improving or changing or whatever. We're sitting down near the lows and we've sat here for a week or 10 days and it's bouncing around, but it hasn't broken out yet. And again, if it got above 15, that might start to mark trend change, but we're not there yet. A few more things I'd like to show you, um, the SCTR ranking. When I look through this, this is just the large cap stocks. And what I want to know is what's leading. And obviously we've had some nice price action from Corvo. That one just went ballistic, um, still does. Um, but here's three other semiconductors, LAM Research, KLA, and Advanced Micro Devices breaking out to a new high this week. That's, you know, just very positive stuff. I did notice Skyworks in here at new 52 week highs. That's nice to see because it's been chopping around and it, it's supposed to be one of the leaders in this 5G arena. Um, Apple, sorry, I'm just trying to find uh, applied materials. This one's breaking out to new highs. So a lot of the semiconductors are now breaking out. I think we've been all over this trade for, for uh, three or four weeks now. But anyway, um, these are, you know, here's NVIDIA broke out above that $200 level. I think um, as it keeps going, that's just um, back to what NVIDIA was doing uh, before all of this correction started. Intel, nice enough. But let's go look at that one just more closely. I think what we want to see here is uh, wouldn't take much to push through new 52 week highs. And looking at the bigger picture, yeah, this 55 levels kind of a been a hurdle level. In here, we're at 57, 55. Let's just draw that as a horizontal line and make it blue. And what we're going to see here is, you know, it would be nice to see Intel. It's just got a little bit to go to get above the, the April highs, but this looks like a big consolidation. It's ready to break out of. So thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs live on Wednesdays and Fridays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 a.m. Pacific time on Stock Charts TV. You can also catch replays on the Stock Charts YouTube channel or on Stock Charts TV, which has a running list of technical charting informational shows. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.